everybody. This is the Coffee with the Geek program. We are into August of 2022. Summer is flying by, as it always does if you're in education these summer months. So with me is really, I'm as always, I'm excited about the guests that I have here. Today is Nefertiti Dukes, and she is a former humanities teacher and now works for Screencastify. And I'm going to give kind of a, an open-ended introduction because I'm really going to let Neft you jump in here and and give us that introduction and tell us about your background and everything. I just want to say like how I came across you. I came across you. I'm a Screencastify lover uh, as an educator. It's a great tool for creating just quick, uh, mostly screenshots, but you can do video. They've increased the functionality and power of it as they go along. And um, that's how I came across you. I took a course as a Screencastify user, and you were one of the presenters, of course. You're kind of the main presenter, You're, I think, in, in the courses. And really, I loved your style. I loved how you did your videos in a camper. We'll talk about that. That was fun, too. <laughs> um, I, but again, and then I started following you on, on Twitter and uh, the rest is history. And I'm just so excited to talk to you about all things education, Screencastify, video, all of that. But let's start, first of all, with the question I must ask is, are you a coffee drinker and what's your favorite blend? <laughs> I am a coffee drinker. I am open to anything that is a blonde roast um, I just got an espresso maybe about three or four days ago. So now I'm going through all of their different capsules um, and I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, so I'm sure I'll have a favorite pretty soon here of the Nespresso variety. Nice, nice. Um, so let's dig into kind of your background before we talk about Screencastify and your role and all that good stuff. So tell, tell us about your educational journey. How did you get to where you are? Yeah, I think my educational journey started pretty early. Uh, my mom is an ESC specialist and my father chairs the uh, curriculum and instruction department at Florida Atlantic University. So I remember his university was within walking distance of where I went to middle school and high school. So he would have me sit in his teacher preparation courses uh, to wait to get picked up because he certainly was not going to drive twice. Uh, so uh, I, I kind of started off relatively early and every once in a while he would allow me to chime in and share my opinion amongst the discussion. So that was, that was pretty cool. Maybe a little annoying for the folks who were paying to be there to have this 12 year old engage in that discussion. Uh, but I guess in a formal sense, it was right after college when I came back home to Miami and started teaching seventh grade uh, English and eighth grade language arts and civics. Uh, so I got the opportunity to immerse myself in a new part of Miami uh, and teach middle school. I left there and eventually moved to high school and started teaching African-American literature to a new group of students. And when I moved over to Screencastify, that education continued. Like you mentioned, uh, now I get the opportunity to work with teachers and help them understand a little bit more about how video can be effectively used in the classroom. So I think every stop in my career has been education in some form or another. So I'm going to kind of throw a curveball at you, but a fun curveball. Uh, Nefertiti, queen of Egypt, I believe. Um, are your parents <laughs> yeah. big historical people? That's a noble name and certainly one I think that, <laughs> that lends itself to aspirational things. Is that on purpose? They, Tell me about your, your parents they, and their name. It is on purpose. Uh, so my name is actually Nefertiti and my middle name is Nzinga, which is a lesser known African warrior. Uh, but the idea was, I suppose, if you give somebody a big name, they will live up to that. Uh, I'm not sure that I have done anything that is worthy of the name. Uh, and I actually hated it when I was younger, but I have grown to love it. Maybe a Stockholm syndrome of the name. You have it for a while and you just learn to love it but certainly is a <laughs> Stop, nod <I'm> so <laughs> to history. Uh, yeah, no, I love it. I think it's great. And I think it's, I think it's unique, certainly. And then when you dig into the history, it makes it even more fun. So uh, good job from your parents. So give them a thumbs up <laughs> for me. <laughs> I'll do that. All right. So let's, let's talk about Screencastify. And again, you know, I don't want to 
you know, be a shill for, uh, you know, one particular tool or that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I really am not. I'm, I'm coming from a point of an educator, especially someone who's educationally technology relevant. Screencastify mm -hmm. is an awesome tool. You know, again, I started using it as, as again, just looking at all the different landscape of educational technology tools. There are others out there. There are good ones out there. So um, put that just out there. But I do want to just talk about Screencastify as a tool. And again, I think from my perspective, they're in it for all the right reasons, which is creating an educational product that is quality and good. So I see it as a total win-win for teachers. Tell me about Screencastify, how you got us started. Tell me about the company in general and, and, and how you like working for it and their goals and missions to help educators. Yeah, I got started at Screencastify after being in the classroom. And Screencastify at that time, and really still is, uh, looking for educators to be able to join the team. The idea there is that Screencastify wants to be responsive to what's happening in the classroom. And a lot of that is in user research and listening when you mention Screencastify on Twitter or LinkedIn or wherever you might be. But the other facet of that is having folks who have real classroom experience within the walls who are able to impart their opinion on where the company is today and where the company plans to go. So I was lucky to be able to join a company that really cared deeply about my experience as an educator and wanted to be able to leverage that in order to build a better product. So in terms of the mission and vision at Screencastify, I think it is an incredibly noble one around democratizing education and giving teachers access to video. One of the things that you'll notice about Screencastify if you head to the website is that we have a free version and have always had a free version. And I don't mean that that's a free trial that you get to use for a couple of days and it's done. It is something that is a legitimately robust product that you can use day in and day out which is awesome. Um, I think the other thing that you'll notice is that a lot of the product updates and things that have happened at Screencastify are responsive to how education is changing. So when I started at Screencastify, we offered a screen recorder that allowed teachers to create videos and a fairly stripped down editor. In the three or four years since, the editor has become a lot more robust. And we've also introduced things like allowing students to be able to create their own videos with Screencastify Submit. Or last year, we uh, unveiled a new thing that allowed teachers to be able to add questions to their videos to be able to quickly check for understanding. So I think all of that is really around not just giving folks access to video, but allowing video to be able to push education forward, which I'm really excited to be a part of in a small way. So tell me about your your role as a creator of content. Again, I've seen your videos through the courses they're easy to understand. You have a really nice, comfortable way of, of communicating in your videos, which I think is really nice. And I think it's, I think it's a good exemplar for teachers to see, like be comfortable, be yourself, but be a good communicator of, of ideas. Uh, and then talk about uh, how I love the videos that I've seen from your courses where you're in a like little camper and you're hanging out and you're, you're doing your videos. That seems so cool. So tell us about just that, like the style and the substance and then uh, your location. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so my approach to video is not unlike my approach to lesson planning. I like to think, especially in those courses, about what the objective is for the course as a whole, and then also what the objective is for each of those mini videos. And I say mini very deliberately because I try my best to make sure that I am not creating videos that are more than about six or seven minutes on the high end, because I want to think about really discrete things um, and allow folks to be able to understand that and then move on to a new concept in the next video. Um, but it really is me sitting down, thinking about the objective, thinking about what I need to show on my screen in order to be able to accomplish that objective. So you'll see me 
switch between maybe it's just the screen recording and my microphone and you don't see my face at all. Maybe there are some videos where you only see my face because my screen recording is not as important and so on and so forth. So thinking about what the appropriate medium might be in order to convey a piece of information. And the other thing that I do is I don't do those videos cold. I have sort of my notes next to me um, or different things that I might want to reference throughout the video in order to make sure that I stay on track um, and in order to make sure that I am appropriately conveying that information. And I suppose the last thing that you kind of alluded to is I try to make sure that those videos are authentically me. They are recorded in the RV that I live and travel in. Uh, they have my sense of humor. So you might have a little bit of a pun or a dad joke that you didn't ask for. Um, <laughs> So just trying to make sure that folks who watch my videos know a little bit about Neff and know a little bit about who I am. And I've gotten that same tip from educators, right? That videos are way more engaging for their students when they feel like they have gotten a peek into your life, right? Um, I think an educator told me a story of how her dog was barking in a video and came and that was one of the most watched videos. And the kids were like, hey, can the dog come visit in videos? Or somebody else talked about how their husband in the middle of a video asked what was for dinner. And the kids came back the next day and said, okay, so what did you cook? Um, so it's really cool when videos can give that knowledge of whatever it is that you're trying to teach, but also become this really cool relationship building piece where you watch the videos and you say, you know what, I want to reach out to NAF and now we have the opportunity to talk. And if we do similar things with our students, then that is game changing. I think that really brings a, an inter a couple interesting points, but one of the biggest ones for me was, you know, during the heart of the pandemic when teachers were doing remote learning, I really felt it was important, even as students came back from remote learning and, you know, schools here were, were very mask heavy. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt one of the one of the biggest problems for me with the mask, and I, I certainly don't want to get into the politics of it, but just I felt like it's a kind of dehumanizing piece. And that a lot of times when 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 everyone was wearing masks throughout the whole school day, you really didn't get that facial connection, which I think is important. Sure. And I certainly tried to, you know, tell teachers to try and embed video into your lessons during, you know, that time when people were coming back and the kids were masked because you need that human connection from video. And so I think to your point is when you're creating videos, try and make that human connection uh, there in a variety of ways, whether it's dog barking, um, you know, dad <laughs> jokes, you know. I think it's so important. I, I think sometimes mm -hmm. we think we have to be, you know, the, the newscaster, you know, I'm, I'm professional newscaster and I'm going to, you know, tell you the news, <laughs> but really in today's age with video, it, it really is important to make that connection. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I guess the other thing that I'll throw out there really quickly is I think even as we move farther and farther away from the pandemic, I think it's important to recognize that the way in which people establish connection is very different, right? So for kids creating videos, it might be that you have a kid in your class who is never going to raise their hand because that is so anxiety inducing. And the way that they are able to share things about themselves is to have a safe space at home or in the hallway or in study halls to be able to record their thoughts. And that creates that human connection. Or maybe somebody just doesn't listen very well when there are 30 other kids in the classroom and lots and lots of distraction. And they actually feel like they develop a better connection watching your videos. So I think there are tons of different ways in which video establishes that connection, whether we're talking about going beyond mask wearing in the pandemic or just giving kids another opportunity to be able to share their ideas and hear yours. Nice. So what I hear you saying, as far as a teacher, if you were to give advice to teachers on creating quality videos, uh, you know, I think you've talked about personalizing it and make it kind of your mm -hmm. own and bring your own personality there. What are some ways I know that you're, you just seem to be a very effective communicator. I, 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 and like I said, when I watched your videos, 
I felt certainly, you know, the connection personally to you, but you have a really nice, even tone, uh, a likable tone. But I also think you're you're just a good communicator. Maybe talk about your background in education, or maybe you, you've hinted at it. Your, you know, your parents. How do you feel you developed such a good way to communicate? Reading books, writing. What, what's the kind of secret behind that? <laughs> I think it's all of the above. I, I'm an avid reader. I'm an avid writer. Uh, I competed in speech and debate when I was in high school and college, but none of that is a secret sauce. Um, I think that is just my personal background and some of the different things that I have liked to do. What I think is the secret sauce, if I'm being honest with you, is practice. Um, I have probably created thousands and thousands of videos and being able to do that has made me better. And I think the second thing is feedback. Um, I get the opportunity to work with educators who for better or worse are willing to tell me when they think a video is awesome. And they also tell me when they think a video was not my best and was absolutely terrible. Um, and I'm certainly not advocating that educators put themselves up for any sort of brutal feedback but if you share a video with your students and you ask something around, what did you think? Or even a more pointed question around, how could that video be more effective in helping you to learn the concept? You probably will get back some really, really good answers that allow you to be a better educator. And the other thing that I'll know is that I think that as an educator, your style has to change a little bit. What might have worked really, really well with last year's students might need just a tinge of editing. And you can throw that in the Screencastify editor or whatever your editor of choice is to be able to make it work for this next group of students. So, so yeah, I, I don't think it's that you have to read every book on the New York Times bestseller list or anything of that nature, but I think you just start to do that practice. And I suppose I would say that very naturally teachers are great presenters. That's what we do every day. We get up, we put on a show. So once you turn on that record button, you might find that you are already pretty fantastic as a video presenter as well. I think that's a great tip of practice, practice. And it's one we kind of overlook, you know, you think uh, these kind of big idea uh, techniques, but yeah, I think, I think you're certainly right. And I think for me personally, practice was one of them over time doing these videos. And also, you know, the tough one is, is actually watching yourself on mm. film, which is, you think like listening to your voice is bad, like watching yourself <laughs> on film is like, oh my gosh, do I really look like that? But <laughs> once you get over it, you know, it's, it, it is kind of a tension watching yourself, but it's really important. I think, like you said, even just personal feedback watching yourself on film and saying, oh gosh, you know, that worked, that didn't work. How can I do better? So uh, great. I think that's a really powerful advice, practice and feedback. Okay. Yeah, so absolutely. let's dig into some bigger, bigger ideas or bigger thoughts. So from your perspective, you were once, a again, you're, you're a teacher right now as well. And a good teacher at that um, doing video education rather than classroom teacher. Where do you see the future of education? What's, what's your crystal ball? Where are we going from here? <laughs> Big question, I know. <laughs> I, I think we're already on the road. And I think the road that we are on is toward more personalized, differentiated learning. And we've talked a lot about that for the past decade really the past few decades, to be honest. But I think what is interesting is that technology is allowing us to get closer and closer to that. So we can do things at scale, which really allow us to provide a different experience for each of the students that are in our classrooms. That might mean that you edit a video slightly so that it is ready to go for a student who is having a particular problem, um, it might mean that we differentiate the assessment, right? Which has been hard to do in previous years where maybe one student is taking a multiple choice assessment, another is writing out a short answer, maybe somebody else is creating a video, another person is creating a song, but all of these things are going to be in service of proving that they know the standard at hand. So, 
I think that this is something that we've talked about for a long, long time, but I'm really excited about teachers having the tools to be able to implement that. And I don't just mean Screencastify. I mean, lots of tools that make it easier for students to be able to personalize instruction or for teachers to personalize instruction for students. Love that answer. Okay, quick question. Um, projects you're working on or what's Screencastify looking ahead? To? Yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to punt this a little bit and not necessarily uh, to get out of answering the question, but I think Screencastify and myself are really excited about back to school to be able to observe some of the new things that teachers implement, um, to be able to observe how students are adapting to another year back in the classroom to be able to understand how the product evolves. So I alluded to that a little bit prior that we are always sort of observing and looking at how the product can be better. So in lots of ways, the projects that we work on may actually be in response to some of the things that we hear from teachers. Nice. Uh, I'm fascinated uh, about this and I don't wanna push your time limits here, but what does a week in Nefertiti's life look like? You on the road, you move around, you're making videos. Tell, uh, yeah, what's the yeah, life yeah. of an ed tech awesome person? <laughs> Yeah, so I said we, we live in an RV um, and travel around. So we might start the week uh, or over the weekend moving to a new location, um, hopefully a location that has pretty fantastic internet. Um, and then day to day, looking at uh, user stories and doing research. So uh, talking to people who use the product and understanding how they use the product. Um, it might be writing a blog post that talks about uh, different things. It could be creating a video. Um, it could be internal meetings where I understand a little bit more about what the rest of the team is hearing. Um, maybe we have a brand new launch that we are putting out materials on, getting to do things like this to talk to folks in the industry. Um, so I would say that there is not necessarily a typical week, um, but one of the hallmarks of every week is getting to talk to users and talk to teammates. Do you feel like you're turning into a little bit of an edgy celebrity? Do you get, uh, hey, I know you, you know, I mean, are, are you going to any of the ed tech conferences and saying, hey, there she is now? <laughs> uh, I think that has maybe happened to me two or three times. Uh, <laughs> But you know what? I'm really excited that I've gotten the opportunity to meet other folks who I think are actual edu celebrities and hear from them. Um, and I've got the opportunity to meet folks who are not edu celebrities, but have some like super, super dope thoughts. I think that is the cool thing about education is that so much of it is really based on being able to share and learn from others. So I'm excited to be in the position to do that every day. Cool. All right. A uh, couple speed geek questions. You ready for them? They can be kind of short answer. Go for it. Off the fly. All right. So let me throw a few at you. So what's your, what's your whimsy? Uh, Star Wars, Star Trek, Harry Potter, anything? Harry Potter. All right. All right. Nice. That didn't take you long. And uh, which house are you uh, most? What house are you in? Uh, Slytherin? I, uh uh, Gryffindor. No, of, of course I'm a Gryffindor, right? Who, who's going to be a Slytherin or who would admit to being a Slytherin? <laughs> my son, that's who, my son says, I'm Slytherin. What? Where did this come from? No, no, you can't. We're Gryffindors. But, you know, kids have to rebel, I guess. Too funny. Uh, okay, so uh, are you a gamer and what's your game? Uh, I don't game very often, but I think the last game that I played was NBA 2K. Okay, cool. And how how'd you do? Do you win the championship? <laughs> I don't think I went into like the full like season mode, uh, <laughs> but I might have won the game. Okay, nice. What's your favorite way to unplug from technology? Reading a book um, and like reading a physical book. I go into a used bookstore and buy a couple and I'm, I'm amazed. Awesome. Well, it looks like the fire drill is uh, kicking me out. So this is the perfect time. So uh, Neff, thank you so much. You do great stuff. Screencastify does great stuff. I can say that 100% as a, as a user and a teacher. So uh, thank you for being here. And uh, thank I you for I having me. Get out of here without the fire taking over. But All thanks. right. Good luck. See you. All right. Thank you.